Hi guys, Han here, and today we're going to be doing a little bit of an informal video. I'm going to be getting ready for a special event I've got today. Do other people do this? I'm going to say other people, I mean non-Nigerians. Like when someone's getting married, we do this thing for the bride where we invite their mum and all their mum's female friends, like their close aunties, etc. And then we invite all the bride's female friends and we come and have like a bridal meeting, like a woman's meeting. And we sit and we talk about, you know, married life, the difference between marriage and being single. And sometimes it gets all, sometimes it gets a bit explicit, bruh. But we, we keep it holy, it's okay. Yeah, basically we're having that today and I'm actually really excited because I've only been to one of these before. And unfortunately, the last wedding I was invited to, I wasn't able to go. But this being my best friend's wedding, of course, I have to, I had to make it happen. So I'm really excited to go today. And I just felt like beating my face to be honest. Like, to be honest, it's at 3 p.m. So I have time, like I'm in no rush. And I was like, you know what, let me turn on the camera and let me lay out my makeup and beat my face for you guys. And actually, while I'm beating my face, we're gonna talk a bit about my thoughts around like this whole marriage thing because you know what, yeah? I'm actually not a child anymore. It actually dawns on me always every day now that I'm actually an adult and it's it's actually a bit depressing. <laughs> I can't lie. I do a little bit. Anyway, I'm gonna start beat the beat first. Okay, I'm starting off with highlighter. And it's been a trend recently. I've seen it a lot on YouTube and like um, Instagram and things like that. And it's putting highlighter on before you do your foundation. And actually, the first time I saw it, I was like, mm, is this just one of them things, yeah? Until I tried it and I was like, oh, this might be one of them things. So this is one highlighter that my mother got me while she was on holiday and she just came home. So if you hear noise in the background, that's my mother. But um, yeah, she, oh, that was a bit much. Well, I got a bit out of hand, but on my face now trust in the process guys actually low-key i'm a bit nervous myself because i don't really wear makeup that often nowadays because the only place i leave my house to go is work or church and i'll be damned if i'm wearing a full face of makeup to zara like i was saying earlier i feel like every day now is kind of like this realization that oh wait i'm actually an adult now like i'm not a child anymore especially i think one thing that's really helped me is being around other people at work because i go to work and they're all talking about oh you know uni is so stressful and i can't wait to graduate what you are you in what are you doing i'm like fam i graduated two years ago <laughs> I really graduated in 2017 and we're in 2019 now. Is that not two years? That's mad. Because I really feel like I graduated like last month. In fact, I didn't even feel like I graduated. I feel like I haven't even been to uni yet. Like, honestly, like I always tell people that like, I still feel like I'm 18 because I really do. I still feel like I've just finished high school. Oh, that's another thing actually. But one of my big goals this year is to actually finally move out of my house i have i've got plans to move to korea and be a basic bitch like everybody else and go through epic and teach english i did try actually to go for april because they have late intake in april but unfortunately uh the application closed before i'd finished like processing my full app i'd already done two out of three steps i was so basically you have to first submit an application and then after your application you do an interview and then after the interview you send your required documents so i'd already passed the interview and i just had to send my documents now but i was having trouble getting them together and last week i had a family trip to nigeria to celebrate my grandfather's 90th birthday which was extremely fun haven't been to nigeria in 13 years far too long i'm disgraced don't worry i feel ashamed yeah it was a really nice trip but unfortunately during that time i missed the opportunity to send my documents and as a result i also missed my opportunity to go to korea in april so i was a bit sad about that but initially the plan had been to go in august anyway this is a lot of foundation fam. so i'm trying not to be too sad about it and on the bright side as well like because i'm not going so soon i can now work more save some more money and probably be far more comfortable when i move because if i did go in april it would have been kind of like a rushed process anyway so i suppose there's pros and cons to it but i cannot wait to move out of my house like <laughs> I'm trying to start living my life. I think what it is for me as well is because I know I want to live like the rest of my life in Korea. I feel like the longer I stay here, I just feel stagnant because I feel like I can't start putting down the foundations of what will be the rest of my life in the sense that, for example, getting married like my best friend is right now. My best friend is getting married to my older brother, actually. And they, this foundation is crazy on camera. Oh, whoa. <laughs> okay, don't worry, guys. Trust the process. <laughs> as I was saying, my best friend's getting married to my big brother. You know, something, I know some of you people are like, what? Yes, you heard the sentence correctly. My older brother, my best friend of... 
we're getting married and they've been together for six years I knew about their feelings for each other before they got together and I've been a supporter of their relationship since the get-go and I was very excited when I was asked to then be their chief bridesmaid <laughs> or made it one well for American, I don't know. Yeah, so I'm really excited for this wedding. Can't lie, being a chief bridesmaid is stressful. Mm, it's stressful. But if it's someone you love, you, you just deal with it. And that's basically what the last couple of months have been. One of the other bridesmaids has been super helpful because she does like event planning as like her main passion. But um, yeah, I can't lie, it's been stressful. Like it was, it's not an easy role to have because you have so much riding on you, like you don't want to disappoint. And thing is, for me personally, like when Wimmy, my bestie, asked us to be her bridesmaids, she made it very clear like she doesn't take for granted that some of us don't want the responsibility. Like it's actually a lot to be someone's bridesmaid. And it's like, it's a financial commitment, a time commitment, like it's actually a lot of work. So she was like, yeah, I don't take for granted that you guys might be busy and you might not want to deal with it. And in the same thought process, I don't take for granted the fact that she gave me the opportunity. Like she didn't have to pick me. You might think, oh, because she's my best friend, he's my brother, like I have to be the chief bridesmaid, but I've never thought of it that way. The fact is, Wumi has a lot of friendship groups that I'm not a part of. She's got her friendship, her friends from uni, she's got her friends from her church. She even had friends in school when we were together that weren't my friends. Mama, I'm recording. Hi, Mama. How are you, bitch? I'm fine, thank you. Oh, uh, God, I was just gonna say I need your mirror. Oh, uh, well, I'm recording, so when I finish, you can borrow it. Uh, how long is this going to take? Well, this is gonna take longer the longer you stay here, can't lie. Oh god, but you need to be quick. When are you trying to go out? Is this a dress? Yes, it's a dress. Why didn't you take this with you to Nigeria? I just brought it yesterday. Uh. <laughs> and also, it's thick as hell. Do you want me to die? Anyway. What can I help you with? I need the. I was just going to come and loan your mirror. You have a mirror in your room? No, the one with the lights. I'm not even using the light right now. I need the light well, because you've got all the bright lights. Yeah, but I can't see what I'm doing in front of me with no mirror, can I? Huh. Like, can you hurry up? My computer and is And I need giant. your eyeshadow. I never yeah, you don't need my eyeshadow. You want my eyeshadow. It's not the same thing. You have to be quick, bro. <laughs> I'm going to put all of this on you tonight. What? <laughs> 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 yeah? yeah, okay. Well, you need to leave so I can hurry up then. Can you close the door, please? Thank you, mothers, you have to love them. Anyway, as I was saying, like I never took for granted the fact that I would be the chief bridesmaid, but I knew that if she did ask me, I would say yes, to start as <laughs> first and foremost. I would say yeah, I did want to do a good job. The thing is, for me, like, she's my best friend, doesn't necessarily mean I'm her best friend, if that makes sense. Like, I'm one of her best friends, but I don't mean, to, doesn't mean to say I'm her best best friend. Also, just like generally, I have no experience with anything wedding related. Like, I've been to weddings, but I ain't ever helped plan a wedding. I ain't ever had a serious role in a wedding. The most I've ever, I've only even been a bridesmaid once, and that was by force to my cousin. And that was like, probably like 50 years ago. So I honestly wasn't expecting to be asked because at the end of the day, there's probably, even amongst her bridesmaids, a couple of people who are more qualified for the role. But because she was, she did give me that opportunity, opportunity for me to celebrate two people that I really care about. I want to do the absolute best I can. Anyway, the wedding is now just over a month away. The bridal shower is sorted. The guests have RSVP'd. It's literally just now sorting out decorations and yeah, actually enjoying the day. I'm actually really excited. Also, I need to get my outfit sewn, my actual Ebby. Oh my God. <laughs> I only really know what I'm sewing for one of them. I know who's sewing them. I'll ask my mom about that later. Rewinding for a second, back to the whole theme of moving out. Yeah, like for example, I was saying that I can't, I don't feel like I can start getting the rest of my life together and like marriage is just an example like I don't want to start dating in the UK knowing that I'm going to leave the UK in X amount of months but I'm gonna be married bro like I'm turning 24 this year I'm gonna be 24 before I even leave Korea and then in Korean age I'm gonna be 25 and I always have a kid by the time I was 25 so I'm very behind schedule at the same time I think that also just goes to show that sometimes the plans we have for our own lives just aren't the way things can work out like I've been telling myself I want to be married by the time I'm 24 literally since I was about seven years old and here I am, almost 24, and I'm like, I do want to be married, but would being married right now really be a good idea? If that makes sense. Like, am I in the stage of my life right now where marriage would be ideal? And the answer, honestly, is no. I'm still moving. I'm still trying to figure out what I'm doing with my life. Like, my brother, for example, who's marrying my best friend, he's working. Like, he's been working for years. He's got his degree. He knows what he's trying to do. He's got his side hustle. He knows what his passions are, etc., etc. I, on the other hand, have opened and closed the business. Graduated. I'm still working part-time retail because I haven't figured out my career path yet. 
Like, I don't think now is the time for me to be married. I'm still trying to get my life together. And then you want me to, on top of that, now come build life for somebody else. Like, you see how these things might not all work together? It's funny sometimes how the plans we make don't actually make sense in the time that we set them out for. I think that's something I'm learning a lot, like, in adult, adult life. It's like, sometimes you have an idea of when you want to do things or what you want to do. But those things can change, honestly. Like, if you asked me when I was in high school what I wanted to do, fashion would not even have been thought in my mind. I used to hate fashion. I used to hate the concept of fashion. Like, why are there fashion? Why are people letting other people dictate to them what they should wear? I still kind of vibe with that sentence. But, like, I understand now why people, like, why there's such things as luxury brands and why some people, like, follow certain brands religiously and all that kind of stuff. Back then, it just didn't make sense to me, but it's just because I hadn't found the kind of fashion I liked. I mean, growing up black and Nigerian, um, alternative fashion wasn't really ever something I was exposed to. But sure as hell wasn't ever something I thought I would be able to do. It was just a matter of finding what I liked really. And I think I'm still in that stage now in life where I'm still finding some of the things that I like. And also, just even the, as the world is progressing, I think the whole concept of like what job you want to do, what career you want to follow is so different. But in my generation compared to like my parents' generation, like for them, it was very well it's very what we call now traditional where it's like you go to school you get your degree you get a job you work that job for the rest of your life and you get married and you have kids and that's it that's that's what everybody does you know but i feel like in this generation the millennials um i feel like a lot of us want more <laughs> to put it simply like i feel like a lot of us want bigger things out of life like we want to experience the world we want to travel we want to pursue our passions as careers rather than having them as like things we do in our free time and i don't think like there's anything wrong with either one of those ways of life per se i know i lean more towards the millennial side but i think in order to achieve those goals what you have to do the steps you have to take are oh this makeup is looking so good on camera yeah, I feel like the steps you have to take to achieve those goals are very different. I know for me personally, sometimes that because there's like generational divide in my house, like the days me and my mother argue, she's like, why are you not going out and meeting man? I'm like, mommy, I'm trying to move to the other side of the world. And she's like, what's wrong with living in your parents' house to get married? I'm like, how am I going to meet my husband in Korea while I'm living at home in London? <laughs> You see, do you see the dynamic here? I have to give my mum props because ever since I've made it very, very clear that I want to move to Korea this year, she's like, she does recent, you know how parents are, but they always be like, oh, that's what they say now. Oh, you want to move to Korea? Okay, sure, sure, yeah, you can do that, no problem. But I think now that it's actually the year, it's not like, oh, I want to move to Korea, it's I'm moving to Korea this year, you feel me? Like, I feel like now that we've reached that stage, she's, um, I don't know how to describe it really, but she's really supportive, but she's really gung her about the movement. This whole epic application, she's been like, oh, what are they saying? Have they asked you this? How was the interview? Like, she's been really attentive in, like, finding out how things are going and what's happening and all that kind of stuff. So I really appreciate that because I know there are a lot of parents out there who aren't that supportive of when their kids want to do something that's a bit unusual. And that's the thing as well, I never felt like my mom is embarrassed to, to talk to people about what I'm doing. Like when I was running my own business, she was always first to tell people, ah, oh, you know, my child is running her business, she's doing her thing, you know? And then likewise with my language learning, she's like, oh, my kid can speak four languages. It's more like three and a half, but you know. <laughs> What I can say is that I really appreciate home support because I think like whether it's from home, whether it's from your friends, whether it's from a partner, whether it's just like a social group that you're part of or in a forum on Facebook, like, I feel like having people who believe in you and believe in what you want to do is extremely, extremely valuable, like extremely valuable. Because I know, I know for myself, I've definitely felt at periods in my life where I felt like nobody was, well, I won't say nobody, I had, I've had, i always had like me, for example, but um, some people's opinions just matter more than others because they're close to you or like you have to hold them in a certain regard about a certain things. So I don't, I, there was definitely moments in line with life where oh my god hold on give me a second i'm trying to slate this highlight oh boots uk have just come through with all these american drugstore brands i'm talking wet and wow i'm talking elf i'm talking um, well it cosmetics i still remember the first time i walked into boots i saw the whole nick section i was like like what alternative universe have i dropped into i went into boots yesterday and i was just like wow like, it's good, y'all. That was a massive tangent about nothing. The point I'm trying to make is, yeah, having people who support the things you do is really important. And I think if you're actually struggling with, um, I don't want to say committing to your goals, but like, for example, I was talking to one of my friends at work yesterday. Shout out to you, Shlom. 
But um, <laughs> one of our managers was listening to our conversation in the staff room, like, it's not like a rude listening, but like we were, we were talking loudly, you know. <laughs> and um, she was like, oh, what do you want to do? And Sean was like, oh, you know, that's a really triggering question to be asking the youth now then. And I know exactly how she felt in that moment because even me, knowing what I want to do, kind of, is still like a hard question to like properly explain to another person, especially of a different generation as well. It's like, do you understand the mindset behind why I want to do the things I want, how I want to do them? Like for me, talking to other young people, talking to other people in my generation about what we want to do in our future, so many people want to be entrepreneurs and I'm like yes yes honey go slay do it and it's like we, we vibe with each other because we all have that same that same viewpoint of the world like taking hold of our lives deciding what we want to do for ourselves not working for other people building our own dreams etc etc I feel like when you try and have that same conversation with someone of a different generation it's just a different story because they don't understand that whole entrepreneurial mindset because they didn't have that when they were young like they see all these young people talking about oh I want to work for myself and this kind of stuff but for them that's something that really only rich people who have lots of money for startups could do it's not something your everyday youth could do but it's the everyday youth that want to do that now anyway the point I was trying to make is that she knew what she wanted to do she basically said what she wanted to do which was to start up her own construction business which is a dope dream do it why not go and be the first shalom construction limited i don't know sorry <laughs> you know what i'm trying to say go and start your business but in the moment she felt really shy to say she was like oh well you know i'm studying law right now and like law has lots of good prospects for making money i'm like no that well the question wasn't what are you doing like what is what could you do it's what do you want to do and i feel like so many young people are scared to actually admit what they want to do because i feel like I know I felt this myself. It's like once you say something out loud, you feel like you have to, like you have to come through. You have to. You said that. Oh, I'm going to do this thing. I'm working towards this thing now. So if you feel like people are waiting for you to either succeed or to fail, and you always have to be hustling. That's another thing as well. Like you see it a lot on Instagram, especially. Hashtag hustle. Hashtag pay hard, work harder. Hashtag there ain't no time for rest. Hashtag. Uh, I don't know, I don't follow people with post trash like that, sorry. <laughs> but um, I get it though, because like, especially, I know we hear it all the time, on social media, people always post like the good and never the bad. Like, do you know how many of my friends are still asking me, oh, how's the business? I'm like, guys, business closed in September. But it's like, you don't go around saying, oh yeah, I closed my business, you know? <laughs> like, you just don't do it. So I, I get it, like, it's a lot of pressure to start putting things out there into the, I've never used this before, so I really hope this comes out nicely. Um, putting things out there into the world and being held accountable because once you say something you can't take it back you know like I'm always going to remember now that she said that she wanted to have her own construction company and I am actually going to be one of the people who supports that but will be asking her so what are you doing like what movements are you making and we're going to we've even arranged to have a whole phone call about this because I know lots of young entrepreneurs not so much in construction but just who are doing their own thing in different industries and they don't have connections and we're going to have a conversation about how to build connections because that's something I know I struggled with when I first started and the point I'm making here is that um, I feel like the first thing you have to do is admit to yourself what you really want to do and be proud of that thing because I think if you're embarrassed to tell people about it you're also going to be embarrassed to work on it I'm actually like trying to play myself I'm trying to talk and do my eyebrows so give me a second anyway as I was saying you can't achieve something if you can't even tell yourself what it is that you need. so you need to be a bit more fearless telling yourself and as a result of that in telling others yeah you will come across people who will laugh in your face and be like ha that's stupid like that's such a dumb dream why would you ever think you should do that especially adults mm, something y'all just chill with that negativity anyway <laughs> in that same breath you will also come across people who are rooting for your success like moi if you tell me your dreams down below i will send you a little heart and be like yes honey go get it make your money slay but um <laughs> you can meet people who are like-minded and also you'll also meet people who will support you you'll also meet people who will keep you accountable and that sense of accountability will also encourage you to work harder yourself this is really really not the color i was expecting i don't know how i feel about it to be honest i feel like it was when i started um telling people that i was running my own brand that i felt like i needed doing more with my brand because then every time i would meet people they would be like oh so how's your brand doing like what's going on and in a way that was it is pressure but like anything worth having in life is not easy to obtain and you will have to go through periods of pressure pressure doesn't necessarily have to equal stress there are ways you can manage pressure and then deal with pressure in a way that you won't be so stressed by it but um yeah it will be pressure to a certain degree but it's up to you to turn that pressure into productivity 
and make it into something worthwhile and I feel like that's kind of one of the things that I'm I wouldn't say struggling with now but like it's one thing that I'm constantly thinking about because like I know what I want to do and I know I have my really long term goals and I've got my really short term goals so short term goals is like moving to Korea, settling down, building my new life there long long term goals is like marriage, kids, business company etc etc but it's like all the steps in between that are the hard bit which is where having a network and having support is really important you need support because people will encourage you and that will help you through times where you feel maybe a little burnt out maybe a little tired maybe a little drained maybe a little bit like you've got no sense of direction left i can tell you firsthand i've been through that it's not a pretty place to be it's not fun it's very very stressful but um, unfortunately, when you have such big expectations of yourself, it's something you're likely to go through. I don't think burnout is necessarily um, like unavoidable. I think if you're aware of it, there's definitely ways you can avoid it. But there are going to be periods where you do doubt yourself and you're like, wow, is this for me? Is this really what I want to do? Uh, can this really work? Mm, that's a big one. Can this actually work? Can I actually do something? Am I just wasting my time on a dream that could never be from the beginning? Uh, the answer is no. It can be if you're a sensible person and you dream big, but practically. There's a first time for everything, but there's also people you can... I'm not going to be the first black person to create a luxury brand. So I know my dream is plausible. I just don't know how to do it. <laughs> so, oh, that is not the shade of brown I thought it was. I'm not using that. But, um, yeah, this whole life thing is actually not easy. <laughs> it's the point that I'm trying to make. Like, also remember that you're not the only one going through the struggle that you're going through because I feel like, especially in this day and age, we're all going through very similar struggles. And I feel like, not just in terms of your dreams, but even just in terms of your everyday life, in terms of school, in terms of social relationships, all that kind of stuff, um, we all do feel a sense of kind of loneliness, really, where we feel like, oh, I'm the only one who feels this way, I'm the only one going through what I'm going through right now. This is really getting deep. <laughs> but, um... Actually, I think you'll be surprised if you open up to people and talk to people. They might not be people you know in real life. It might not be people you ever meet in real life. They might be people on a forum somewhere. It might be a forum room related to what you want to do or how you're feeling or whatever it is. But I guarantee you there's somebody out there who understands. It's just you. Putting in the time and effort, go and help those people. And I try, promise you, once you meet those people, you will feel a lot better about how you're feeling. When I started my brand, I didn't know in real life anybody who wore the fashion that I wanted to design for. Still kind of don't. Like, I know I know people in real life, but they're not people who are near me. My nearest friend who wears this fashion is like in Manchester, so <laughs> they're miles away. I didn't even know people in real life who wore alternative fashion, talk less this particular fashion. So yeah, it was very lonely when you, when you start when I started out. Um, I didn't know anybody had their own business. I didn't know anyone who started their own business so young. I didn't even know people wanted to start their own business like that. Like, I was very much the person who was like, from the, like, literally from like middle school, like, mm, I'm not trying to work a nine to five, I'm not trying to work for nobody else. I'm trying to do my own thing straight out of uni. I'm trying to move out. I'm trying to start building my own life, like, ASAP. ASAP with a, with a swiftness. Whereas all my friends were like, oh yeah, typical stuff. Like, as their parents would drill into I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a doctor. And I was like, y'all want to be boring but that's okay i mean to each their own no offense if that's actually your job and you really enjoy it i'm happy you find what you love and what you love makes you money that's fantastic but um i always knew that i was someone who would work for satisfaction more than a paycheck i think that's the easiest way to put it it was it was very difficult at the time because i didn't know anybody who felt the way i did like it's not that my friends didn't want to be happy and enjoy what they wanted to do because i'm very sure they did um but i feel like for some people they can be satisfied doing a job that they don't necessarily love but can endure and being able to do their own thing in their own time but for me i feel like life is really short and the time i'm wasting not enjoying what i'm doing is wasted so for me the idea of working a nine to five spending a ridiculous number of hours a week doing something i don't enjoy and then only having that little period of time when i come home in the evening to actually be myself mm -mm not about that life it's not for me it's not the one sorry next like even just going to school was hard enough you, you want me to now go to work <laughs> it's not for me so i knew from a young age that what i wanted to do was already 
outside the norm, so to speak. And it was very stressful for me, not having anybody around who felt the same way. And that's why, I think that's also why for me, whenever someone tells me that their dream is to be an entrepreneur, especially if they're young, I am like so, maybe even overbearingly so supportive and like, not just supportive, like enthusiastic about it. I'd be like, oh, support. even if it's a, like a business I have no idea about, I'd be like, figure out your name, have you done your business plan? What's your business model? How are you planning to build it? Have you got connections? What trade shows are you going to? Like, I'll be asking all sorts of questions. And it's just because I, well, I suppose I don't want people to feel the way that I felt where I was like, having no one to talk. Is that a knock at the door? Yeah, yeah come in. I okay, come. What palette do you want? A neutral one. A neutral one? Ha, huh, that's a hard one. Wait, when you say neutral, do you mean like brown neutral or do you brown mean. Brown neutral, goldy uh, neutral. Gold neutral, brown neutral. Okay, um. Ugh, that's a hard one. Wow, this video went really, this is a tangent and a half. But yeah, I don't know. For me personally, I feel like having a support system is very important and very undervalued. Like, I think it's one of the most important things you can have, especially when you're going through hard times. Like, it's one thing to have a support system when everything's going well and people are like, oh, hey, that's great, I'm so happy. But it's really those times where you're really struggling that you need that support system. Like, for example, before I closed my business, I was talking to my mum about it. And my mum and I, we get on. I love my mother very much so. But um, we don't always see eye to eye on this kind of thing because of that generation gap that I mentioned earlier. When I told her, I was like, I think I want to close this business. She was so against it. She was like, no, you've been working on this for two years now. Like, you're just going through a rough patch because you've had some bad business deals. You're just stressed out. Like, give it time. I'm sure once everything's calmed down, you'll be like happy that you kept the business open, this, that, and the other. And I'm like, no, Robbie, I'm really full about this. Even when things were f going fine, I was thinking about closing this business. Like, I'm really ready to do something else with my life. This is not it for me. It was a good learning experience. I enjoyed it while I did it, but like, I'm ready to move on. It's just like, no, keep the business. Just take a break, this, that, and the other. And even though I didn't decide to close the business at the end, it was really, really comforting to know that if I did want to keep this business open and I'm struggling, my mother would literally be ready to move heaven and earth to help me do what I wanted to do. And it's not so much necessarily that the people who support you will always be like offering you financial support, but even just emotional support is so undervalued. Like, it's, emotional support is is priceless, guys. Like, it's priceless. And um, that's how I felt when, when my mum said that to me, to be honest. I just felt like, even though this isn't ultimately going to change my decision, just having that support was a massive comfort to me. It helped me work through the stressful times and feel a lot better about all of it. Yeah, finding a support system is really, really important. And then on top of that, um, networking. I don't know why this became how to live your life 101 with Han, but um, yeah, if you're a young entrepreneur, networking is also extremely important because at the end of the day, none of us can do everything. And that's something I learned very, 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 very much so the hard way. We'll need help in something you might be able to get the business off the ground yourself you might be able to be great at pr or hr and customer service all that kind of stuff but it might be the logistics side where you need help it might be the legal side <laughs> the financial side <laughs> where you need help because the lord knows i did not know what i was doing i still don't know what i'm doing and i'm paying for the mistakes that i made so if that's not even registering your business with hmrc know what you're doing that's a video for a different day. Anyway, Rome wasn't built by man, one man, and it wasn't built in a day. You need somebody, you need people who have knowledge that you don't have experience that you don't, because those things are valid. There's a reason all these jobs you're applying to say two to five years experience. It means something, it makes a difference. And I feel like, I know for me, I do want to open another brand in future. And I know the experiences and the things I've learned from running Heaven's Atrium are going to be priceless in that endeavor because it's literally going to change the way um, I go about everything, basically. I'm, gonna, I'm hopefully not gonna make the same mistakes that I made the first time. Not just that, it's helped me identify the areas that I need to maybe do a bit more research in, learn a bit more about before I do endeavor to start my own business again because this is not child's play anymore. This is what I'm saying, like, we're actually adults now, guys. Well, I say we. I'm actually an adult now. So, like, all these decisions, they cost money, fam. <laughs> I can't lie, some of these mistakes cost real money. So I'd rather know I'm doing it right the first time than go through it all and then realize halfway that, oh, maybe this wasn't it, Chief. Maybe this wasn't the way. 
yeah, this video got very, very off topic. I don't even, where did we start? We talked, we started with me moving out of the house and now we're talking about running your own business. It's okay, that's my life right now. The other things that you see in my life are BTS, like this BTS calendar here, or this BTS poster up here. <laughs> Work hard, play harder. It's actually important as well. Like I said, not everybody looks for their life satisfaction via job satisfaction. I don't thought I'd be one of those people per se, because for me, I always thought of a job as, I want my job to be something I enjoy, so I can enjoy it while I make money from it, but what I do outside of work is more important. But now I think I've seen them as equally important to a sense. Having a good work-life balance is very important. That's another thing I realized during my time running Hems Atrium, because it was all work, no play, and it was not healthy, and it was not fun, and it was extremely, so <laughs> highly do not recommend work-life balance is of utmost importance and it is not to be taken for granted guys you need to unwind you need to de-stress yeah um recently i've been trying to pick up a lot of hobbies that i gave up during school time because i was too busy studying to have a life and even, even when I was running a hell of an as well, there was a period in time where I felt like work was my hobby. Like, all I would think about, all I would do was work. So recently, I would say I'm in love with K-pop again, <laughs> because I'm most definitely not in love with K-pop again, but I am in love with BTS very much, so I have a Stan Twitter, and it is like my escape from life. Like, when I just don't want to deal with the real world, Stan Twitter is where you'll find me. Um, besides that, I've also got back into drawing. Actually, the first job I ever wanted to do as a child was I wanted to be an artist. <laughs> but at the ripe old age of seven years old, I was like, think about this. All the famous artists you know were broke when they were alive. Maybe art isn't for me. <laughs> yes, very uh, practical life decisions at the age of seven. I actually really like that's the point NYX eyeliners. The only thing I don't like about them is that they all dry shiny. Why are they not matte, please? Like, why? Just actually for why? I don't know if I'm ever gonna post any of my drawings online. I mean, you've got the, oh, you can't see any of them in the frame right now, but I've got some on the wall, so you'll probably see a couple of them that way. Would you guys wanna see an art video? Maybe I could do like an art video, kind of like a get rid of me while I'm just talking about something completely unrelated to what I'm drawing, and you guys can just watch my process. I'm also getting back into music, and oh, that's, that's, that's a whole uh, series of videos. I'll say for one video. I don't know if I've ever mentioned it on this channel, to be honest, but music is my actual number one passion and I gave it up for six years because many reasons that I will probably sit down and talk about in one video one day. Recently I said you know what them reasons are bullshit. If you love something do it and I've started pursuing music again. I actually have surgery in three days now to fix some problems I have with my nose and my throat and my breathing and I'm taking voice therapy and all of that should hopefully help my singing in the long run as well and one of my goals for this year is to release my first single yeah like I have big goals for this year guys I have a lot of things I want to do I want to succeed at but um also I'm trying to learn how to just enjoy the moment you know like it's not everyday hustle it's not everyday work hard and I think that's another thing as well with music I'm trying to learn yeah that I have goals for it I'm trying to learn to just enjoy it as I'm working towards those goals as well like the goals aren't so much the focus if that makes sense like it's my enjoyment of music and then if the goals work out on top of it fantastic if they don't oh well probably will do some videos where I talk about some of my favorite music it's mostly Korean because that's just how I am <laughs> I just like Korean music it's mostly actually K indie and I'm really into like uh I want to say non-mainstream underground Korean rappers but I don't know if that actually makes sense because I feel like all of them are mainstream now because liking underground is mainstream if that makes sense and I feel like just the fact that I can find them means they're no longer unknown. They're people that I've never seen spoken about on stand Twitter. let's put it that way. So less DPR Live, Dean etc more Vincent, Ovid, people whose names I can't remember because they're people that nobody knows. My lips are low key kind of dry <laughs> and I'm picking on that lipstick but it's okay we'll make it work. I've been really into this brown lipstick recently as well. I just bought my first, my older sister loves brown lipsticks and I never had any before and I was like you know what let me just let me just try it let me just do something a bit new. Lip products is probably one of my favourite makeup like categories. Probably highlighters and lipsticks are like my two favourite makeup categories. I have, I would say probably like between 20 and 30 highlighters or 
product that I can use as highlighters. They might not be intended as highlighters, but I'm gonna use them that way anyway. And then I have like, I did count, and the last time I counted it was over 100, but I've since been shopping, so I have more than 100 um, lip products as well. Let's talk about music. But yeah, I'll probably do some videos in the future uh, talking about my favorite music artists that I like, songs that I like. If you follow me on Twitter, you will see, I, even on Instagram as well, I do post a lot of screen caps or hashtag now playing. Anyway, um, I know I didn't really finish talking about music, but the, the long story short is I will be making videos about music I like in the future anyway. I'm gonna set the space, and then I think we're gonna call it a day for the beat. I'm talking about a single product that I <laughs> but let's pretend I did. Now we're using the sample that I got from Nick yesterday, it's the matte finish setting spray. This is actually my first time using this. So if I like this, I'm gonna go buy the full bottle because I need a new setting spray. But if I don't, that's really weak. I just hope it doesn't mess up my makeup. I'm afraid some pictures, so. Okay, let me get rid of this now. Oh, my Jesus. Your guy has braids for the first time in a long time, essentially. Anyway, this is it for me, guys. I actually need to finish getting ready because I need to clear up, I need to get my life together, and I need to go. I was, I was supposed to do so many errands this morning, I didn't do any of them. I was like, no, I'm just gonna record my video instead. But um, no, I actually need to get my life together now. So we talked about a lot of deep stuff uh, for whatever reason. I don't know where this com where all this came from. But I hope you enjoyed our chat with each other anyway. I know I did. It was really fun to actually just, like, actually just get, get a few things off my mind and just put them out there into the world. So if you did like it, leave a like if it made it ha you happy, because that will make me happy. Also you can subscribe, come back for more. Um, what else do people say in their outro? Oh yeah, hit the notification bell, because you know my upload schedule is when I feel like it. So if you want to know when I felt like it, you need to have hit that bell, so you get the notification and then you don't miss the video. Because I know you guys want to see me as much as I want to see you. Surely, surely. Anyway, check out my last video here. This one is dedicated to all the young entrepreneurs out there trying to make their dreams come to life. Leave me a comment, tell me what your dream is and your real dream, not oh I'm, I'm thinking of, no, what do you want to do? Who do you want to be? Let me know. This is.